Pompeii is synonymous with one of history's most infamous natural disasters. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD buried the bustling Roman city under layers of volcanic ash and pumice, freezing its inhabitants in their final moments. While the ruins themselves have provided a snapshot of Roman life, the preserved bodies of Pompeii's victims offer an even closer look into the lives of the inhabitants. Modern technology is allowing archaeologists to look beneath the plaster casts of these victims with greater detail. Using advanced computed tomography or CT scanning techniques, researchers have revealed more secrets locked within the skeletal remains of those who perished. When archaeologists first began excavating Pompeii in the 18th century, they discovered that the solidified volcanic ash had, in many cases, formed molds around the bodies of the victims. As the organic material decomposed over time, hollow cavities were left behind, preserving the final postures and even the clothing of those who perished. In 1863, the Italian archaeologist Giuseppe Fiorelli pioneered a technique to capture these remains. He realized that by pouring liquid plaster into these cavities, he could create exact replicas of the victims in their final moments. This process was necessary because without it, the fragile spaces left by the decomposed bodies would eventually collapse and be lost forever. This method transformed the understanding of the disaster. Instead of simply finding skeletal remains, archaeologists now had the forms of the people who had lived and died in Pompeii. The plaster casts revealed the incredible detail of their last moments, some huddled together, others caught in mid-stride, and still others lying, succumbing to the toxic fumes or the weight of the collapsing structures. Over the decades, around 100 of the victims have been captured in plaster, including those of pet dogs and other animals. However, the full scale of the disaster was much greater. Anywhere between 10,000 and 25,000 residents of Pompeii and nearby Herculaneum are estimated to have been killed on the spot. While this method provided incredible insights into the disaster, it had limitations. The plaster, though effective, was not transparent, meaning that the actual skeletal remains within the casts remained unseen. Over the decades, new approaches were sought to improve the preservation and study of these figures. A major project was undertaken, involving the restoration and scanning of 86 of these plaster casts. The primary tool was computerized axial tomography, or CAT scanning, the same technology used in hospitals to create detailed images of the human body. CT scanners use X-rays to take multiple cross-sectional images, or slices, of an object. A powerful computer then processes these slices to construct intricate 3D models. For archaeologists, this means they can look through the plaster without disturbing the contents within. The results have been nothing short of astonishing. One of the most surprising discoveries concerned the dental health of the Pompeians. Scans revealed well-preserved teeth in many victims, with few cavities or signs of decay. Researchers attribute this to the typical Roman diet of the time. It was generally low in processed sugars, a major culprit in modern dental problems, and high in fiber, fruits, and vegetables. They consumed grains, olive oil, and some fish and meat. However, the scans also revealed evidence of significant wear on the teeth, likely due to impurities like small particles of grit and stone in their grain, milled using traditional stone grinders. Another new finding involves a cast discovered in the Forum in 1963. It was long known as the pregnant woman due to the noticeable protuberance of its abdomen. The CT scan revealed that the individual was likely not pregnant and may not even have been a woman. The researchers explained that there was a tendency to interpret any rounded belly as a sign of pregnancy. This led to inaccurate and romanticized interpretations. The scans have allowed for incredibly detailed examinations of individual victims. One example is the cast of a small boy who was estimated to be around four years old. He was found lying near an adult male and female, presumed to be his parents, and alongside an even younger infant who appeared to be asleep on the mother's lap. The plaster cast clearly showed the outline of the boy's clothing. The CT scans revealed his skeleton beneath. High-resolution 3D reconstructions showed the bones and captured his facial expression. The scans have also provided new evidence about how people died. Beyond the established knowledge of suffocation from ash and gas and thermal shock from pyroclastic flows, the scans revealed that many victims suffered severe cranial trauma or significant head injuries.
This suggests that collapsing buildings played a major role in the death toll, as heavy volcanic material accumulated on roofs and the ground shook from tremors accompanying the eruption. Structures weakened and gave way, crushing those sheltering inside. Some of the scans also challenged long-held assumptions about who exactly perished in Pompeii. For years, a common belief persisted that those trapped by Vesuvius were predominantly the most vulnerable, the elderly, the infirm, women, and children, those thought least capable of a swift escape. But the comprehensive skeletal data emerging from these scans paints a far more indiscriminate picture. The victims, it turns out, represent a cross-section of the entire community, a random sampling of normality, as researchers put it. This suggests the catastrophe struck so suddenly and overwhelmingly that it caught people from all walks of life. It is comparable to other instantaneous disasters that often do not discriminate based on age or physical ability. Intriguing evidence also emerged regarding the eruption's timing. The traditionally accepted date is August 24, 79 AD, based on one version of Pliny the Younger's letter. However, other evidence, including the presence of autumnal fruits like pomegranates in the archaeological record and discovered braziers suggesting cold weather, had led some to propose a later date, perhaps in October or November. The CT project has added another piece of evidence to this debate. The examination of one cast clearly showed the impression of thickly woven, heavy fabric. Such dense clothing seems far more suited to the crisp air of autumn in Campania than the heat of late August. This lends some scientific weight to the theory that Vesuvius erupted later in the year than August. Other scans have yielded equally fascinating details. The skeleton of an adult male victim was clearly visualized, showing his spine, ribs, and pelvis intact within the cast. In some cases, advanced imaging techniques were used, employing specific contrast settings or virtual dyes to differentiate structures or even attempt to reconstruct soft tissues digitally. Scans of skulls, for instance, were processed to mimic the appearance of muscles and skin. While plaster casting remains the most common method of preservation, researchers have experimented with alternatives. In 1984, one skeleton was cast in resin, capturing even finer details like hair and fabric textures. However, resin is expensive and difficult to work with, making plaster the preferred choice. The CT scanning project has opened new doors for non-invasive research, by creating digital models, scientists can study the remains indefinitely without risking damage. The scans also allow for virtual autopsies, revealing injuries and diseases that would otherwise go unnoticed. As technology advances, who knows what else we may learn? Perhaps one day, facial reconstructions will allow us to look into the eyes of these ancient Romans, bridging the gap between past and present. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss our latest content. Comment your thoughts below and see you in the next one.